Today's video is a planner chat. I'm going to be going through the planners that I started in 2024, the planners that I'm currently using now, and kind of discuss some of the things that did not work for me. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Tracy and I am a girl with plans. So I have a bunch of planners on my desk. I have a very tiny desk, <laughs> so they are kind of overwhelming my desk at the moment. But we're going to kind of talk about some of the planner changes I have made. Um, some of these, like my catch-all, this is my catch-all stack. I'm actually going to go back a little bit further than the beginning of this year because this is one of the planners that I have tried almost every layout in. Um, and then I have my fitness stack from the first half of the year to the second half of the year. And then my social media stack from the first half to the second half. And then I have a few miscellaneous that I may touch on. So with that said, let's start with the biggest stack so I can get it out of the way. I'm gonna put everything else aside. We're gonna start with my catch-all. All right, so I have three different variations of what I started using for my catch-all. Now, in full disclosure, prior to starting with the Discbound system, I was using an at-a-glance planner as my catch-all. You know, the little bound small ones that a lot of times you can get from work. <laughs> it's part of your work supply order. Um, so I was using that for a lot, a long time. Um, and then I decided to invest in my own <laughs> catch-all planner. And I decided to start with the happy planners. So I guess we'll start there first. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible. So this isn't going to be a full on flip through. <clears throat> it's just going to be me chatting a little bit about why I changed certain aspects of my planning and am I truly where I want to be as far as planning and that particular type of planner. So as I said, um, <clears throat> you know, at a glance was my technically first planning <laughs> trip into my catch-all, which by the way, catch-all is the main hub. It is kind of like your everyday planner. It has your appointments, your to-dos, birthdays, anniversaries, all that kind of stuff in it. It's just, I have multiple planners. So I, you know, identify one as a catch-all. So um, <clears throat> when I first went into the disbound system or the happy planner system, I, I did use a dashboard layout. You can see that here. Um, it does look pretty full, right? I would say it's not like a lot of <laughs> great things in there, but it, it, it's decently full. Um, and then I ended up switching to, I mean, I'm skipping some. I um, switched to the vertical layout. You can see there, and then I got all fancy with the vertical layout. Um, I think I even tried, is it in here? Yeah, I even tried the teacher layout. So I pretty much went through and did a whole bunch of different layouts as far as from Happy Planner for my catch-all. Um, I will say I did like this one a little bit better just visually as far as being able to divide things by category and kind of seeing what I need to do for that one category for the week. So visually, I think this was probably one of the better like layouts, but then I decided to change and move this layout to a different planner. And, um, and I couldn't have the same layout in two different planners. <laughs> so um, I went back, I think, yeah, I went back to the dashboard. Um, the one thing I learned about a lot of these, all of these styles, so like the teacher, the dashboard, the vertical, when it came to my catch all in particular, was that I was mainly using it for pre-planning. And what I mean by that is I come in on, I don't know, sometime prior to that Monday. So, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, decorate it, make it look all cute. And then I go back in the same day or the next day, fill in all of my weekly plans. So anything that I'm going to need to refer to throughout the week, I'll go ahead and fill that in um, prior to the week starting. So like pre-planning. The problem is, and of course you guys would not know this, <laughs> is I really did not come in to this particular planner various times throughout the week. Um, maybe I may have come into it once throughout the week to check in on it. Maybe not. Um, odds are 
when I came in to set up the next week, I referred to this week and checked off everything that I did. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I meant by I was mostly pre-planning and I wasn't actually actively getting into this planner throughout the week to check on my progress, to make changes, to add things. You can see there's still blank boxes here. Um, and if I was in it throughout the week, even though let's say the 19th was not gonna be a super busy day, maybe I could have on the 20th came back and wrote what I did that day. But that is pretty much <laughs> evidence that I really wasn't doing too much active planning in my planner when it came to my catch-all. So <clears throat> what I did is midway through last year, um, I moved into a daily planner, a, an hourly daily. And I use this for the second half of 2023, as well as the first half of 2024. These are six month planners. Most of your daily planners are six month planners, although there are some that are quarterly. Um, and I believe there might be some that are four month too. So you either have to buy two, three or four a lot of times when it comes to a daily. There are a few brands that do have full years, um, but those are gonna be thick. So just be aware, especially if you like to decorate. Um, but this was a six month planner. So I started it in July of 2023 and then I got a new one that I used in January of 2024. So um, I'm not, like I said, this isn't like a full on flip through or anything like that, but I wanted to try it. I got them super cheap, um, heavily reduced because they were outdated. And I had wanted to try a go get a girl, if I'm being completely honest, is that I wanted to try the brand. Um, I had really no expectations as far as whether or not I would like daily planning for my catch all or even if that would work for me. So, um, I kind of went into it with like, let's just see. And I absolutely loved it. I was kind of surprised with how on track it kept me or how it kept me on track is better, <laughs> a better way to say that. Um, yes, I get to decorate, um, this particular version, the five in one version, I have an actual weekly in here. You'll see from the one I'm using now does not have that in there, but I was doing my pre-planning. So this is what I'm talking about with pre-planning. So I would come in here, I would go ahead and write everything down that was going on that week. But the difference is, and this is what makes the biggest difference from for me because I am not a super busy person. Um, I do not have any kids. Um, I do not have a husband. I'm only managing the life of me, myself and I. Um, I do have a full time job and you know things like that, but it's not crazy busy. But um, I, I keep this full because I literally put everything on here. So you can see here I have like important reminders, my home, which has kind of turned into like house to do's or chores and then work stuff. And I would come, so I would pre-plan for this. Um, and then on, let's say Sunday, I would come in, see what I have to do here. What, what, is there anything on my schedule for Sun uh, for Monday? And then I would come in here and plan out my day. So when I plan out my day, I put everything on there. So I time block my work hours because I know that's when I'm not available. Um, I would actually put self care so like skincare, morning routine type, I put a sticker to advertise that or even hand write it in. Um, at the time I was doing Duolingo, hopefully I'll get back into that. So it also served as an accountability and I did kind of put the things in the time slots. I wanted to kind of keep that in because again, I'm trying to map out my day of when I can do things. So that worked well. Also what works well with this particular layout is the ch um, the like checklist over here. You have your work to-dos and your personal to-dos and I do use them for um, its intended purpose because I do combine my work and my home into this one catch-all planner. Um, but yeah, basically coming in here and setting it up the day prior forces me to come into this planner every single day, a lot of times multiple times a day because I am not coming in here on Sunday and setting up the entire week. I'm only setting up Monday. Now, if I know that I have something going on on Friday, I will come in here and write in Friday. I have this appointment, blah, 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 and go ahead and write that in. Um, but I'm not actually writing everything in. Um, I still like to keep that either the day before or the morning of. Again, that keeps me in my planner and that is something that I need. <laughs> Everybody might not need that. You might have this routine built in where you just check in with your planners several times a day. But for me, the daily really does 
um, help <laughs> kind of, I don't like to use the word force, but it does. It forces me to come into my planners um, once to twice a day. And that really helps. A lot of times, sometimes I even do it three times a day. So um, I found that this worked for me when I switched into it last year. So again, I continued it to the first half of this year. And then in July, because again, they're six month planners, I decided to try the A5 version, which not only is it a little bit smaller, it also lacks the weeks <laughs> in here. So it does not have the weekly layout in here. So I can't do my pre-planning. Um, but here is kind of, I mean, you can see the space wise, it's fine. So, um, I mean, you still have the same amount of hours. It's just, less room so if you write bigger it might be a little bit but it's not that much smaller um you can tell here trying to actually line up the actual pages it's just a tad bit smaller um i did like this one because if i needed to take it to the office or whatever it is a little bit easier to take um than this this is a little bit bu more bulky to be completely honest with you i do not take this into the office so this has been staying home but yeah, I do like this. Um, like I said, I continued using it. So obviously I like it. Um, I do say, I think I mentioned this when I was doing my brainstorming for 2025 lineup. I need a pre-planning section just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so that is the one thing I'm missing on this. Of course, I, I did try to do it separately, but I don't even know where I have put that now because obviously I did not keep up with it. But yeah, <laughs> so I will like to add a some type of way to like pre-plan for the week to map out my week so I can use that to help me do the days um, because I am forgetting like itty bitty little things that may not seem important um, at the beginning of the week. But if you continue to not do them, they become very important. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I don't foresee myself stepping away from a daily planner anytime soon, a daily hourly that has checklists. Um, I do like this particular layout. I do have quite a few of these in my stash. I have a discount version. I have another A5 and then I have some outdated five and one coils in my stash. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to keep an in with this because I do like the layout. I do like that they do break apart and have two different boxes here and in this particular layout any of the go-getter girls um they do have a split weekend um which means the saturday and sunday is on the same page and you also get a little bit smaller of an area for your hours so they are not broken into half hours like this is this has like a little line in between each hour to indicate the half hour so these are full hours um this is fine for my catch-all it hasn't been fine for other things but it's fine for my catch-all i don't really plan that much on the weekends <laughs> to be completely honest i'm i'm more of go with the flow or doing nothing on the weekends that's kind of my weekends um so that is kind of a brief overview of my changing catch-all styles and how i ended up on really enjoying a daily hourly with checklist that's kind of the key there um the next one i think we will touch on um and i'm just going to say touch on it because i've had several videos where i've chatted about how to plan and different types of planners for your fitness and wellness um so i don't want to go too deep in that because i feel like i chat about my fitness and wellness planners a lot um this fitness and wellness has also been quite a journey um, wellness is something new to my overall tracking. So this is all tracking. This is after the fact. So I'm not really, I did start pre-planning, spoiler alert, in the second half starting July, I did start pre-planning, but prior to that, it's strictly tracking. So it's coming in after the fact and jotting down all of your stats and information. I have been fitness planning and tracking since about 2014, 2015, and I had been using for most of that time, um, at least when I first discovered it, which I can't even remember, it was probably like 2015 or so, the Happy Planner Fitness box sets that you used to be able to get, which had like a sheet of stickers and a fitness planner and a couple of other things in it. So um, I had been using that. Every year I would get one of those. That was like my treat on Black Friday. And um, 
Eventually, when I kind of moved everything into Happy Planner, I started trying different layouts. I went to the wellness, gratitude, vertical. I even played with the dashboard just for fun. I knew that that wasn't going to work for fitness tracking. Um, it could, but it didn't for me. Um, but I just played with them all. And I did realize that when it comes to tracking, because I'm doing it after the fact, I already know what I'm tracking. You can see I even set it up here for December and never filled it in. But when it comes to doing it after the fact, it is a little bit easier to track things because you know the space that you need. Um, sometimes when you're pre-planning or when you're planning, it's a little bit hard to track things because you're not sure how much space you're going to need for what. You know what I'm saying? But after the fact, you can kind of figure out like here, I know like for this particular week, at least because I was changing things up, I was writing all of my actual workout stats at the top, my Apple Watch stats here. And then I was trying to keep a log of my macros down here. Um, so I already knew that. So I, I like reserved the space, meaning I didn't put stickers there. And then I could put stickers everywhere else. Um, so yeah, now... Like I said, for me personally, I realized like I could use any layout for fitness tracking. I actually could use any layout for wellness tracking. And for wellness tracking, I also went through a whole bunch of planner layouts because again, I was tracking things after the fact or during the day. So not necessarily like after the fact, but like I would have to sometimes come in multiple times. Like I track sleep, energy levels. Um, I try to track mood. I track... Um, any types of symptoms I have, like anything you can think about wellness, it does change what I, like what I track changes based on kind of like what's going on at that moment with my body. Um, but like I said, I've tried different um, layouts. So for 2024, the first half of the year, I was actually went back to a fitness extension pack. So that's what this is. And I took the fitness extension pack and I put right behind it. Let's see if there's a better week because I don't know what I was doing here. Maybe it was February where it got a little bit better. Um, I also put the, um, the monthly extension pack here. I mean, the monthly planner immediately preceding it to do goals, but we're not really talking about, that's just an extra thing that I did that was fun. But okay, so like, we'll do this. So like, this is the monthly, I um, mean, this is the extension pack for fitness. And then if you flip the page, it had these meal prep sections in it, which this is like, the, was the first page. And then this was the second page, but it allowed me to insert additional pages in between it to kind of keep the weeks together. Um, so for that, you know, you would just flip the page and then this would be my wellness. You can see I did not do a good job for wellness. Um, I did work out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but I did not write anything for Wednesday, really didn't write anything for Friday, and didn't write anything for Saturday <laughs> um, for wellness. So that's going to kind of bring me to my next point. This was, I started doing this in 2024. I had not done this previously, but I found, I was like, oh, I have all of these outdated verticals that I don't use. So I was like, this is where I'm going to log my food. Obviously I didn't do, I did okay with that, but I did not nah, do a little bit better than that done to with my wellness. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I was doing. I was using three different planners, four if you want to um, count the goal section, every month for fitness and wellness planning. But as you see, even though I came in here and wrote all of this stuff down, I was not flipping the page to write this down. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that, that is a prime example of lazy, y'all. <laughs> so I decided to try, because I have so many of these planners in my lineup. Basically, you know, these planners, the Go-Getter Girl planners, they're quality planners. So retail price is pretty pricey. Um, they're like $55. Um, I do have a discount code, which will save you money. All of that is always down in the description box. <laughs> um, but they do have sales quite frequently. A lot of times you can use my discount code on top of their sales where their sales will be like 50, 60, 65% off or what have you. And they did have some few, a few outdated planners at one point. And I think I picked this up for like 15 bucks y'all. So I was like, okay, for $15, I can try it for fitness and wellness and see if it works. 
Now, again, as you saw with the other one, this particular, the coil bound version does have the five in one. Um, it's a five in one system and it does have this weekly page immediately before the daily pages. And this is allowing me to pre-plan, which was something I was not doing in here. Um, Pre-planning is I get to actually map out what I think I'm going to eat for the week <laughs> or I think I want to eat for the week. So that way I can kind of create like a grocery list and things of that and maybe even get to a part point where I want to like meal plan or meal prep. Um, I am meal planning, but meal prep. Um, so I do this intermittently. I will say I'm currently not doing it for every single meal. I'm kind of like seeing what meals I need to prep for and things like that. I really don't do Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then I actually been planning out my workouts, which again, currently I'm not working out very much, but when I was, this was very helpful to kind of give me a plan, almost like, you know, if you're going to the gym and you're taking workout classes, you have your week set for you because those workout classes occur on certain days at certain times. And I kind of want to get into that as far as my home workouts go, because I feel like it will make me, um, a work out, <laughs> B do like <laughs> a substantial workout and not just do like a 15 minute workout. Cause I'm tired. If I already planned to do an hour, hopefully I would do the hour, but also more of a well-rounded routine type thing. And then I have this to the bottom section because it's there for like symptoms or anything like that. Um, so this has actually been really good addition to my fitness and wellness planner tracker, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I moved into the daily. Like I said, I had these in my stash. So that's the reason why I did it. Um, prior to moving into the daily, I did do, I don't have it with me. I don't even know where it is. I did try bullet journaling, um, which kind of eased me into the daily um, because I was doing kind of daily pages for my workout tracking and the bullet journaling. I just didn't like setting it up to be completely honest. This is kind of already set up for me. <laughs> um, even though there aren't like titled sections or anything, I went ahead and decided to use the hours to my advantage. I will say I was going back and forth about whether or not I wanted the hours or whether or not just to cover it with washi. I decided to keep the hours um, and I'm using them to my advantage to actually pencil in um, like when I eat. So if I eat at noon, I will write what I ate at noon. My energy levels, if I take my energy level at three, or if that's the time I'm like recording my energy level for that point, I will write it in there. So I know at three o'clock, this is how I felt, you know? Um, and then same thing for wake up. I will put that there. So I am kind of using the hours to my advantage. And I do think that is like, very helpful. I don't think it's going to be a make or break though. Um, like once I run out of these planners, and there's like another planner that's a daily that might work for me that might not have the hours. I don't think the hours are going to be a make or break, but it is very convenient when tracking when I ate and my energy levels in particular. Um, and then because, as you know, like in the other one, I have the, it had the work and the personal boxes. I do cover them up in my um, fitness and wellness. And I just put a sticker here to keep my Apple watch stats. But if I didn't use the sticker, I could just write that on there directly. And then this is where I kind of write, you can see here, I write these stats from my actual workout. So I'm loving this. And there's a couple of reasons why I love this. Um, and it's not necessarily because it's a daily, it gets me in here every day, like it is for my catch all. It's actually a completely different reason. First reason is my health, my fitness and my wellness are both on the same, or my fitness and my health are both on the same page. So that way I can get a snapshot of everything because my workouts could impact my energy. It could impact my mood. It could impact a lot of things. So it is nice to see it all on the same page. Um, the other reason why I like it on one page is because if I work out and I'm coming in here and filling out my workout, odds are I'll come in and fill out all the other stuff that I was not filling out in this planner. That's probably one of the main reasons is I just feel like keeping it together on one page greatly increases the chance that I will write down all the things versus just writing down the workouts. Um, sometimes, hey, look, here we go. Sometimes I will come in here and write down some things when I did not work out. Obviously, they're, they're, they're lacking a little bit. They're not as in-depth as these when I work out, <laughs> but I still do it. So, I mean, think that's why this particular layout works for me because it's all on one page, which means if I'm coming in to track my workout, which is a lot easier for me to come into a planner to track than other things. <laughs> 
I don't know why. Um, when I say it's easier, I mean I'm more motivated to come in and record my fitness information and my planner than like sometimes my energy levels. But if it's all on one page, I'm more likely to do it. So that is why this works for me. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's a daily, hourly, or anything like that. It just so happens that that works really well. But it's more for me having it all on one page just allows me to... It, it makes it easier to write down all the things <laughs> instead of just writing down my workout and not writing the others. Okay. This next one is probably one of the reasons why my planner lineup video has not happened yet. Whoops. I'm hitting lights, hitting everything. I just, I need a bigger desk, but I don't have room for a bigger desk. Because this is my planning desk and I have an office desk too that I work at that has my computer and stuff. <laughs> okay. Um... So I'm going to talk about my social media planning. So I will say this is my this is what I did in the beginning of 2024, a big happy planner. Prior to that, I also tried multiple layouts, um, all in the classic size. Um, I did not start social media planning until I guess maybe December 2023. Um, that is when I started my YouTube channel. So that's when I realized I needed something to kind of plan out things. Um, and I went through multiple layouts for that. I did the <laughs> dashboard, the vertical, um, the teacher, those might've been the only three. And I, I ended up on the teacher and I finished the teacher layout through the end of 2024. It did work the best for me, but the teacher work layout works the best for a lot of reasons, but it did work the best for me. Um, and then in 2024, I decided let's go big, <laughs> right? Okay, I have some 2023 um, in here I was playing with, but look at this, y'all. Look at this. It's too big. It's too big in a couple of ways. First of all, um, I, I can decorate, and like the stickers, like perfectly only filled up the bottom row, so it didn't go into other rows. Um, you can just see it's just really big. I don't need all this space. Um, one of the reasons why I went into this, well, let's be honest. The reason why I went into this is because I got the teacher layout for five bucks as part of a box set. It was heavily reduced on clearance, um, which the, the teacher layout, if you do like to redate it across the top, like I do, because generally the dates are over here because teachers have five day work week. So it's dated here and then blank across the top. So then I hide it with stickers and labels and stuff. And then I redate the top. You can pretty much get an outdated planner um, if you don't mind. Um, and they're a lot cheaper that way. Like I said, I got an entire box set for $5. So that's what started this. And then I got um, a, what do you call it? The monthly layout, which I think I have information on it. So I don't know that I can show it. But I have the monthly layout, which you guys have seen. I got that in a large. And that was, I mean, a, a large, a big happy planner. That was actually free. Um that was just, that's a different story. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be on the shelf, so they couldn't scan it. And they're like, here, here you go. You can just have it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyways, um, I loved decorating this. This was so much fun. Look how pretty these are. These are just so pretty. And I got to use like this for redating. I would not probably be able to do that in a classic size just because you get more room. So, I mean, the, the decorating of this stuff was super fun. Um, I mean, I could even probably decorate it more than I did. Um, it's just, it's super fun and you can decorate a lot and it still doesn't really impact your writing space because it is a big, but like I said, it was too much room. You can see I have a lot of blank space in here. Um, and it's just too large to carry around from room to room. Like this stays in my house. So when I say carry around, a lot of times I am referencing room to room, which I feel like in order to be on top of your plans, at least this is just me, um, I need to have it in different areas of my house depending upon where I am. Like not every day or whatever, but like on the weekends, I I'm not in my office as much. Obviously I'm in my office, which is where I film, a lot during the week because I am working from home. So then I come into here and I usually plan after my work day and stuff like that. I plan before my work day and after my work day so I can keep my planners on my desk. However, on the weekends, 
these really need to go in the living room so that way I can keep track of it. Sometimes in the evenings they need to go in the living room because I need to keep, keep up with it. The big never left this area. Actually, I never even stayed on this area. I don't probably stayed in my floor because it's just too big. So needless to say, I wasn't really utilizing it that much just because it was way too big. So I, I went back down to the, um, oh look, same stickers. <laughs> I went back down to the classic size and I decided when I was doing the classic size, I'm like, okay, I love the teacher layout. I know I have the teacher layout, but I'm like, I'm going to use the horizontal. It's fine. It works fine. I, I think it works fine. Um, however, what I said about my catch-all is also now becoming the issue with my social media planner. Actually, I don't think it's now becoming an issue. I think I'm now realizing the issue. It's been the issue all along, even when I was using the big, before the big, and now after the big. The issue is I'm using this to pre-plan my weeks, and then I'm no longer revisiting it. So like I will come in here and I will write everything that's coming on coming up for the whole week. You can see I have empty boxes here and I know I had things to do. I just never revisited this planner until I have to come in and do the next week. And then I flip over, see what I haven't done, and then maybe I'll move it over to the following week. So that is becoming the issue. And that's why my 2025 planner is kind of up in the air when it comes to social media planning. Because I know for a fact, um, something like this is just too much. Like, I, I don't have enough. I mean, you can see, I really don't have that much for social media. Let's turn to a blank one. Wait a minute. Is this a, yeah, yeah. Um, like, there's no way. I don't need hours for social media. I don't really need a daily for social media. There's just not enough. So, this would not work, even though... You know, in theory, <laughs> the having to come in and set it up per day would work um, to get me into it. It's, that's just way too much space. So I'm kind of contemplating a different things. And if you saw my Aura Estelle haul, you know that I got a B6. And that was a B6 undated. And it had like more of, they call it a horizontal layout, but it's more of a quad layout. Um, but when it, like quad, it's like literally four boxes per I mean, two boxes on each page. So you only get four boxes on a two-page spread, if that makes sense. Whereas like a classic size, like um, Live Love Posh, when I say quad there, there's actually four boxes on one page. Um, so I guess it really wasn't a quad. <laughs> but it's boxes. It's like, you're yeah, two two per page. Um, so I could use that. And then there I got a weeks planner. And that's the one I'm leaning toward. And I'll just kind of explain my thought process is I'm almost wondering, and I have, I have to test the theory, but am I not coming into this? Because now I had this as a separate planner for the first half of the year when I was using the teacher layout. It was its own planner. It wasn't Franken-planned like it is now. It's Franken-planned now. Um, and obviously, when I was using it as a big, it was its own separate planner. Um, it's just, I'm wondering if going smaller, like a week size or even a B6, and it's its own little planner, if obviously that will make it easier to transport from one room to another within my house. So will that cause me to actually use it more is what I'm saying. Like not necessarily use it, but reference it throughout the week. See what I have to do so that way I'm not checking in when I go to set it up on a Friday and realizing I haven't done a whole bunch of stuff for the week prior. And now my Saturday and Sundays are now full with all of these to-dos that I wish I would have done Monday through Friday. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the gist of it. So obviously a daily kind of helps with that with my cat job, but I think for social media, maybe downsizing into something a little bit more portable could help with that. So that is where I'm leaning for 2025. It's either that B6 or the week's size planner. And that will be a learning experience to see if maybe going smaller could have the same impact as going to a daily planner like I did for my fitness and wellness as well as my cat job. All right, we are almost done, and this is probably going to be quick because I don't really have much to compare it to. So, and was it the May, spring, I guess it was spring, summer, spring, and maybe it was summer, the subscription box for um, Notique. Um, I signed up in May, and it was shipped out at the end of May, so I got it like in June. We got these gorgeous 
pocket personal. Maybe it's personal. I don't know the terminology for these little ring agendas. Ring agenda. <laughs> so it had these six little rings on it um, that open pretty easy. Things like that. Got some note paper and things like that. I made the dividers. I did a setup video where I made like count like monthly calendars and things like that for it because it didn't come with that. And I wanted to try it out. I'm so glad I made my own because it did not work for me. Um, it's just it might be the size, but it also might be the rings. It's just, it gets in the way. And I know like during setup, it is easy to like take it off the rings, put it on your desk, fill it out. But as far as everyday use, you're not always going to want to take the pages out to write on them. So they're just, it's a little hard. Like right now, if I want it to write on this, I feel like I have to come here. To write comfortably it's just hard to start here so I feel like I have to like start like a quarter way in um, just for comfort because of the rings so yeah this like I said I don't know if it's the rings I think it is the rings and not necessarily the size that was the problem for this um, I did remove the rings at one point um, I just unscrewed them um, but the screw screws into like a um a holder and the holder stays out and you can't really remove the holder because it's sewn all the way around so it's not like you can push it through and remove it um so it really didn't give you any more space so i put the rings back and figured it is a good place to house note pages that i may or may not need um because i love this actual pocket agenda itself i love the cards the card slots you have like pockets I just really like it and of course it just looks super cute so my solution was i picked up this moleskin pockets planner i believe in september august or september so like i didn't use it for obviously the beginning of the year is empty and i'm just putting on here important dates that's all it's on here doctor's appointments meetings anything that is like an important date that I mean, the purpose of this anyway was I would have it in my purse if it fits, because um, some of my purses this will not fit in because I like my crossbodies. Um, but if it fits, I would keep it with me and like, let's say the chiropractor. I would go to my chiropractor appointment and then when you leave, you schedule the next one. Um, I could just pull this out quickly, look at my like monthly schedule, which would be here or my weekly or whatever, and then tell them what day I want to do it, what time, and then go ahead and write it in here. And then I can transfer it to my like Google calendar later. Um, but it's nice to have it with you on paper because sometimes you're also on your phone when you need to look at your calendar that's on your phone. So I like having it in paper um, and then having it as a separate pocket planner. I can keep it in here when I want to take the whole agenda, but I can easily remove it. So that has worked. That's like the biggest change. And I really did realize that, like I said, I had never had a pocket or an on the go planner before. Um, and this has actually shown me that I need it, even though I don't need it very many days. <laughs> I only need it a handful of days, but when I need it, I need it. So I will probably be keeping a form of this in 2025. Just not sure how, like I said, it is sometimes hard for my purses to fit this in there. But if I ever take a big purse, I do take this or my book bag or anything like that. Finally, I did an entire video where I was going through my reading journal kind of brainstorm, but this is one of the only other things. Actually, there is one more thing I did want to bring up, but we'll just chat about it. Um, this is something else that I'm in kind of frequently. I have a lot of journals, so I'm only going to touch on this one because this is the one that I'm in the most frequently as far as just you know, setting up and you can see it's full now. Um, the only reason I want to talk about this is because I started out in a discount system. I did a whole flip through in that one video. I will go ahead and link it down below in case it, um, intrigues you. Um, and I do feel like starting out into reading journaling, a discount system or a rank system is probably a good way because it is very stressful to figure out where you want your pages to go in a bullet journal. It's like, okay, well, I kind of want to keep all my challenge pages together. So if I keep all my challenge pages together, um, how many challenge pages do I need? 
or do I, how many do I need to leave blank before I start my monthly wrap ups? There's like a lot of thought that has to go into it because you can't easily move the pages to get around. Um, some people will just set up for the whole month and then if they want to put a challenge, they'll just insert it um, behind their monthly, um, which is fine too. But if you are someone that wants to keep like things together, this makes it a little bit more complicated. So sometimes starting out as a like disc bound reading journal is a little bit easier until you figure out the kind of setup you want. Um, but I moved into this bullet journal because I think my reading journal is a, I don't even, I don't want to say I think, I know, a re this reading journal is something I'm going to want to keep. I'm going to want to keep it for the long term, almost like as a memory keeper to look back, look at the books I read. Plus there's like really cute spreads in here and things like that. So I'm going to want to like look back at this stuff later on, read some of my thoughts on the book. It'd be really cool if like a couple years down the road, I want to reread a certain book or something like that, see my initial thoughts and then come back. Um, and because of that, that was one of the main reasons why I decided to move into a bound system is more for just, I guess, longevity of like looking back through it. And um, it'll just easily sit on an actual shelf. I can just lay it like this or I can have it upright or whatever. And it just, it doesn't take up as much room as a disc bound system. Plus it's a lot more sturdy. So that was one of the main reasons why I switched. The other reason is I do like <laughs> for just aesthetic purposes. I like how it's just like almost one page. Your two pages are one. And that's how I use it a lot of times. I make this one big page versus the ring system. We have the rings in the middle. <laughs> so that's another reason. But the main reason was like longevity. The only other thing I do want to chat about is in May, I did start like a daily journal. And I did that in a theology just because it was thin paper. It was bendable. And I was like, oh, I can keep this on my nightstand. I have not been in it as much as I would like. Um, I have been in it a lot less than I would like. Um, but that is like a dear diary type thing. I am going to keep that going into 2025 just because I have the space. And then I do want to keep a dear diary type thing. And when I say dear diary, I say that more as it's a place where I get my thoughts and feelings out, but I won't necessarily go back and reread it. Um, and I definitely will not be sharing it on my channel. Um, I am going to be moving to a daily planner. I mean, a daily journal in 2025, but that's going to be completely separate. That's not going to house those things that I might not want to reread. Um, it's going to house more things that I would want to reread. Um, so I am going to keep that into my lineup. I just need to figure out, I need to make myself write in it a little bit more because I'm still holding things in and not putting them on paper. Um, so I think that could work. We'll have to, I'll have to give you another update. I think that will have to be like a quarter one update when I talk about how all of those daily journals are working for like different aspects of my life. So I think that's it. Yes, this was a chatty video, but you know, when you saw planner chat, you knew that was coming, but I figured this was a nice intro video to probably my planner lineup series, which after chatting it through, I think some of you guys might be able to guess some of my planners I will be having in 2025, um, just based on my chatting it through and maybe some other sneak peeks. But I think I'm pretty much set and I think I have everything in. So I think I can go ahead and film that planner lineup video. So that should be coming up pretty soon. Um, and I need to go ahead and get it out there so I can start setting things up. So yeah, um, I think this was good for me to kind of get those final thoughts out um, as far as what I like and what I dislike into planners and how my planning style has changed. I wanted to film it in a video format because sometimes these may help um, you guys out there um, figure out what's working or what's not working for you and maybe how you can change things. So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please press that like button. And if you have yet to subscribe, I hope you would also consider subscribing. As I said, my planner lineup video should be coming soon. Um, hopefully within the next week or so. Um, I may have to split that up though into like planner lineup and journal lineup because I have a lot of journals too. So I'll probably have like a two part video of that. And then I'm going to be in on the setups and there's probably going to be a lot to set up. Um, so if you hit the subscribe button, go ahead and remember to hit that notification bell as well. 
All right, y'all. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. And I hope you have a good rest of your day, evening or night. Until next time. Bye.